get your Woody Jackie Dumbass and check it out because let me just paint the picture for y'all. Now, imagine you're a rapper, maybe let's just say a musician, because you've been working at it for years trying to hone your craft. You're coming from an obscure place like Virginia. Well, maybe that maybe that's not too obscure because I believe Clips, Pusha T, Trey Songs, ain't they from Virginia? Anyway, now imagine that you finally got a song. You finally got one song nowadays. You only need one song, right? You only need one mic, you need one song, nigga. Now, here comes the big bad Drake, okay? He makes another song, inspired by yours, obviously, because he heard it. He calls it the remix to your song. Only thing, you ain't on the song. Now, everybody loves his song. Maybe he even added on to it. Maybe it's even better than your song, but your song is the root, okay? Now, that's cool and everything, but you're probably thinking, okay, Drake's gonna do what Drake does. I mean, it's probably gonna give me a little bit of light, but it's not gonna take away from my song. I can still tour, I can still do this, it's still growing. Hopefully, people know who I am eventually. I'm gonna keep working it. Now, you go on tour, and then your tour actually gets to Toronto, Canada. Now, that sounds familiar, right? Now, you perform the original version that inspired Drake's version, and then, after the show, you check Twitter because you want to see what the fans are saying. Are they appreciating you, appreciating the real person who kind of inspired it? But ironically, you're seeing the opposite in tweets because, coincidentally, the same day you perform in Toronto was the same day Drake dropped the video to the song that was inspired by your song, and everybody's going crazy. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, let me put it out there. Talking about Hotline Bling, which is Drake's song, and I'm talking about I Like to Cha-Cha, which is obviously Drum's song, okay? Now, Drum is checking his Twitter mentions. Everybody's in his Twitter mentions saying, yo, aren't you that dude that did a great cover for Drake's song? Now, it fucks you up. It does. It gotta fuck you up. Because you're saying, wait, wait, are they now saying I was inspired by Drake, not the other way around. And this is the thing with social media, it'll really fuck you up because you got these people who think that Drake is the end all be all. They'll never accept that you inspired Drake. Drake always inspires you. Now, let's not get it twisted. Drake's version is the bomb, one of the best songs that came out this year. And to be honest, it might even be better than Drum's version, depending on how you personally feel about each song. Okay, one's kind of a love ballad or kind of like a missing type of thing. And the other one is kind of like everybody just kind of move. Okay, now let's lay out the facts, because if that happened to you, you probably would feel a little bit salty. Kind of thinking somebody jacked you, but let's let's add the facts. Five months ago, in Chicago, a song was picking up a lot of steam, being played all over the local airwaves, and also like in places like D.C., local clubs moving across the country. And it's an all-purpose hit song. It gets the people moving and DJs, just like myself. We love those records. Now, Drake shows up. He shows up to Chicago. He's turned up in the club. He hears a song. Maybe he's heard it before. We're not going to say he heard it there, but it was definitely five months ago. He hears it and he's even dancing to it on stage. Oh my God, this shit is popping. I like the cha-cha, right? Now that's a song by the musician called Drum, right? This is before Hotline Blink came out. Now a few months later, after beefing with Meek Mill, he's about to put out a diss track, which is Charged Up. He's kind of a little antsy, not knowing if this diss song is not going to make the impact. He drops a song to piggyback off of it, which is definitely a certified hit. It's called Hotline Blink. Initially... When it first came out, it was titled as Cha-Cha Remix. How ironic. A remix to a song without the initial person who made the song, right? Now, it was uploaded to SoundCloud as such, Cha-Cha Remix, right? Then a name change happened on SoundCloud that just called it Hotline Bling. Now, even Beats 1 still call it Cha-Cha Remix. Now, and by the way, I just want to put this in perspective, okay? Drake and Drama, they're still hustling. They're doing their thing, obviously. There's no stimulus package that happened, which means Drake did not jump on like a drum track in the last couple of months. And maybe there was some type of conversation behind closed doors. We don't know. Some people are saying, even though we don't have any proof, that supposedly Drake offered him to be on a remix to his own track. And he declined, which is the reason why Drake just did a track without him and just put it out. All right. Now, we're back to where we started. You just did your show in Toronto. You come check it to the mentions. You did the original song that inspired Drake's song. And don't get it fucked up. Drake's song is amazing. 
but you hear everybody tweeting you saying, yo, your, your song is cool, but Drake's song is a shit. Your song is cool, but the original version that Drake did is way better. Your song is cool, but maybe you should have left it to Drake. That fucks you up. Now, we're at current state. We're at today, right? Drum actually got on Twitter, and he made his feelings known about Drake actually using the song. And by the way, I also got to lay out some more facts. Drake's song, Hotline Bling, sampled a older song, and Drum's uh, I Like to Cha-Cha actually samples a different song. He samples like uh, some Super Mario type of thing. So they use different sample, but you could obviously tell the influence in the melodic formation of the song. Okay, they're kind of in the same type of mood. Okay, it's something where maybe you can't prove it with the keys, but when you hear it, you kind of like, okay, that reminds me of this. And once that hits you instantly, yes. Now, Drum said this, just performed in Toronto for the first time tonight, and it was bittersweet. Sweet, because I'm out here sharing my music, my sound with the people bitter though because after my performance all i'm seeing is cha-cha slash hotline blink comparisons on my timeline niggas want to know how i feel about that yeah i feel i got jacked for my record but i'm good i'm happy that the va sound that me and gabe niles are steady working on is growing and in 2016 we gonna own it god damn okay now, a lot of people are then jumping to conclusions or even saying, yo, Drake is still another thing. Drake is a culture vulture. Drake is doing this. Drake is doing that. Some people who are defending him to the max saying, how is this different than like somebody just sampling a beat? How is this different? Now, this is on a very fine line. And this is a problem. And I told you guys before, man, we've allowed. And by the way, let me just speak on the actual quality of the video drake was doing some real coolish moves uh he was pretty much uh, he attempted to hit a milli rock he tried to be dripping like of course sauce waka of course he was kind of doing a savage bop like Lil j he pretty much kind of half did everybody's move in the game he also did the ginobili okay he did pretty much everybody move in the game okay now it goes to this question, which is a slippery slope, and the game has gotten to the point where we don't require actual answers for actual questions. When the Ghostwriter reference track thing came around, we all excused Drake because everyone said, oh, he's written for people before. We let him get off the hook without even giving a legit answer. You know what answer he gave? He went to Fader Magazine and he said, the reference tracks are what they are. Use your own brain. You decipher it. Whatever you think it is, that's what it is. <laughs> that's a boss move and that's because his fans don't care and his fans are pretty much um, the large majority of who's active and who's loud on social media right so if they don't care why does he need to explain but when it comes to this it's down a slippery slope because do i think it's either between theft or influence is drake stealing or is he influenced because it could go either way a theft is somebody taking something putting it out as their own Without crediting who they got it from or without permission, that's blatant theft. Influence, though, influence is when you hear something, you get another idea or you get to build upon something and you use it maybe as a foundation or an inspiration for you to build something else, okay? You could clearly distinguish the both of them, right? The influencer and obviously the influency, if that's even a word. But in this case, it's kind of hard to even decipher that. Now, I do believe his influence. I don't think Drake is just quote-unquote stealing. I believe Drake is obviously influenced by homie's track. He made his track, and when he put it up, and obviously that's the thing about success, man. When somebody else gets big off an idea that you felt you had first, and we see it all the time, everyone wants credit. And I'm not saying Drum doesn't have a point. I believe he has a very strong point because I would have felt the exact same way. We all would have felt the exact same way. But did he get jacked or did he really just influence Drake? Now, we definitely influenced Drake. As far as jacking, if Drake went with the same title, Cha-Cha, and I'm not too sure why he changed the title. I think we need some answers for that, but we'll never get no answers with Drake. Okay, we'll never get an answer. So that's a big problem with me, but everyone's cool with it. Why did he change the name? Why was it initially Cha-Cha Remix? Why was Drum not on the song? And if he was on the song, why would this song go out as a Cha-Cha 
remix. So it's very interesting to me, but I do not think Drake actually stole this track. I think he's definitely inspired. Definitely inspired, but it goes on a very slippery slope of everyone nowadays trying to claim Drake stole this from them and took this and took that. I mean, even simple flows on uh, What a Time to Be Alive, people are accusing Drake of stealing. Is he stealing or he's just influenced? Because that's a very slippery slope in hip-hop where people borrow lines all the time and people are influenced. Because in that case, about 70% of the rappers use what the Migos call their flow. Are they stealing from the Migos or are they influenced by them? We need to kind of get to some type of resolution. And by the way, to all the Drake fanboys, like, you guys never think Drake do anything wrong. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Okay, I don't want to hear you guys talking because I realized last night on Twitter, by the way, I thought the video he did for Hotline Bling was whack. Simply whack, okay? His dance moves, and I'm not even blaming that on him because it's a director's ability or it's his responsibility to make the shit poppin. Drake's dance moves were hilarious to me. But the background and the simplistic and the, it was just, it didn't fit the kind of mood or feeling I got from the song. And this is me personally. So I didn't like the video, but his dance moves were popping, <laughs> or not even popping, but funny. There were definitely jiffable moments. He made it just to get a bunch of gifs, and that creates a conversation on social media, and that's what it is. He's doing it today. But as far as anything else, as far as him borrowing styles, I think it's down a very slippery slope. We could talk about it, but you heard what Drake said. Drake says, I spread waves. So he shines a light here. He shines a light here, he shines a light here, he shines a light here, but along the way, he might take a word or two, he might take a line or two, right? How much of that is acceptable? How much is not? Right? He went to the Chicago movement, now he's talking about, listen, pull up in, run up boy in, I listen, I catch, uh, what, fuck the ops and all that shit, fuck the ops and all the shots they send. So it's a very slippery slope, and it's one that you would like to hear him speak on more, but you would also like to hear everyone kind of like put their opinion on the board. What do you think? Do you think Drake steals, or do you think he's influenced? And if it's not him, because some people would be like, well, it's a producer. Drake and 40, and 40 came out and said it, 40 said, Drake works in the capacity of a producer because he picks the Sonics that I work with. He picks the type of sound and we mold it together. So it's not me bringing him a beat. We pick it together. He might not play the instruments, but he picks everything. And we create and mold the sound. So you guys get in the comment box. Make sure you guys like. Definitely subscribe. I think it's very interesting. Now, as far as drum, listen, it's Big Fish Eat Little Fish. Your song will never get as big as Drake. Never. Never. It just won't. Drake's song is about to hit number one, and the reason why I put out this video today is because it's number two when he did this whole speech, and he, him putting out the video today is going to get him his first number one of his career, but what after that? You guys let me know, man. Get a comment box, make you guys like, definitely subscribe to your boy, The Jackademics. I do not think it's stealing. I think it's influenced, but you guys will be the judge as well. Your boy, The Jackademics, make sure you guys like, definitely subscribe, follow me on social media at I'm Academics, and I'm out. In Chicago, a song was picking up a lot of steam, being played all over the local airwaves, and also like in places like D.C., local clubs moving across the country. And it's an all-purpose hit song. It gets the people moving and DJs just like myself. We love those records. Now, Drake shows up. He shows up to Chicago. He's turned up in the club. He hears a song. Maybe he's heard it before. We're not going to say he heard it there, but it was definitely five months ago. He hears it, and he's even dancing to it on stage. Oh, my God, this shit is popping. I like the cha-cha, right? Now, that's a song by the musician called Drum, right? This is before Hotline Blink came out. Now, a few months later... After beefing with Meek Mill, he's about to put out of this track, which is Charged Up. He's kind of a little antsy, not knowing if it's this song is not going to make the impact. He drops a song to piggyback off of it, which is definitely a certified hit. It's called Hotline Bling. Initially, when it first came out, it was titled as Cha-Cha Remix. How ironic. A remix to a song without the initial person who made the song, right? Now, it was uploaded to SoundCloud as such, Cha-Cha Remix, right? Then a name change happened on SoundCloud that just called it Hotline Bling. Now, even Beats 1 still call it Cha-Cha Remix. Now, and by the way, I just want to put this in perspective, okay? Drake and Drama, they're still hustling. They're doing their thing, obviously. 
there's no stimulus package that happened, which means Drake did not jump on like a drum track in the last couple of months. And maybe there was some type of conversation behind closed doors. We don't know. Some people are saying, even though we don't have any proof, that supposedly Drake offered him to be on a remix to his own track, and he declined, which is the reason why Drake just did a track without him and just put it out. All right? Now, we're back to where we started. You just did your show in Toronto. You come check it Twitter, man. I can still tour. I can still do this. It's still growing. Hopefully, people know who I am eventually. I'm going to keep working it. Now, you go on tour, and then your tour actually gets to Toronto, Canada. Now, that sounds familiar, right? Now, you perform the original version that inspired Drake's version, and then, after the show, you check Twitter because you want to see what the fans are saying. Are they appreciating you, appreciating the real person who kind of inspired it? But, ironically, you're seeing the opposite in tweets because, coincidentally, the same day you perform in Toronto was the same day Drake dropped the video to the song that was inspired by your song. And everybody's going crazy. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, let me put it out there. I'm talking about Hotline Bling, which is Drake's song. And I'm talking about I Like to Cha-Cha, which is obviously Drum's song, okay? Now, Drum is checking his Twitter mentions. Everybody's in his Twitter mentions saying, yo, aren't you that dude? Get your Woody Jackie Dumbson and check it out because let me just paint the picture for y'all. Now... Imagine you're a rapper, maybe let's just say a musician, because you've been working at it for years, trying to hone your craft, you're coming from an obscure place like Virginia, well maybe that, maybe that's not too obscure, because I believe Clips, Pusha T, Trey Songs, ain't they from Virginia? Anyway, now, imagine that you finally got a song, you finally got one song, nowadays, you only need one song, right? You only need one mic, you need one song, nigga. Now, here comes the big bad Drake, okay? He makes another song, inspired by yours, obviously, because he heard it. He calls it the remix to your song. Only thing, you ain't on the song. Now, everybody loves his song. Maybe he even added on to it. Maybe it's even better than your song, but your song is the root, okay? Now, that's cool and everything, but you're probably thinking, okay, Drake's gonna do what Drake does. I mean, it's probably gonna give me a little bit of light, but it's not gonna take away from my song. Who that did a great cover for Drake's song. Now, it fucks you up. It does. It gotta fuck you up. Because you're saying, wait, wait, are they now saying I was inspired by Drake, not the other way around? And this is the thing with social media, it'll really fuck you up. Because you got these people who think that Drake is the end all be all. They'll never accept that you inspired Drake. Drake always inspires you. Now, let's not get it twisted. Drake's version is The Bomb, one of the best songs that came out this year. And to be honest, it might even be better than Drum's version, depending on how you personally feel about each song. Okay, one's kind of a love ballad or kind of like a missing type of thing. And the other one is kind of like a, everybody just kind of move. Okay, now... Let's lay out the facts, because if that happened to you, you probably would feel a little bit salty, kind of thinking somebody jacked you, but let's, let's lay out the facts. Five months ago, 